Hi there, I'm Jeremy Krug, and in this video we are taking a look at more of AP Chemistry Unit 8, Section 3, which is about weak bases in this video. Now, in our last two videos, we talked about weak acids. This time we're looking at weak bases. Now, when we say weak bases, you may be dealing with uh, chemicals, substances that look kind of like this. One thing that you may notice that several of these weak bases have in common is that they have a nitrogen and hydrogen combination in almost all of them. And these weak bases, these Bronsted-Lowry weak bases, are generally going to have this highly electronegative nitrogen atom that is ready to accept a positive hydrogen ion proton. Now remember, according to the Bronsted and Lowry definition, a base is going to accept that H plus ion. So this, these NH combinations make this a very convenient combination. So normally if you see a covalently bonded compound that has nitrogen and, and hydrogen in it, it's probably going to be a weak, a weak base. We're going to start by working a couple of weak base problems. You'll find that most of these are done almost exactly like weak acid problems with a little twist at the end. So in this problem, it says consider a 0 0.40 molar solution of NH3. Its Kb is 1.8 times 10 to the negative fifth. Write the base dissociation reaction for NH3. So first thing we have to do is write that equation. So there's the formula for ammonia. And it's, of course, added to water. And in a base dissociation, the products will be the conjugate acid of that base and hydroxide. So the conjugate acid of this ammonia is just add on NH+. So add on NH plus to NH3, it becomes NH4 positive, the ammonium ion. And of course, there's our hydroxide. So that's part A. Now let's calculate the hydroxide concentration as it tells us to do in part B. We're going to use an icebox method, just like we did for weak acids. It says the solution of the ammonia is 0 0.40 moles per liter, so I'm going to put that in my initial row. Of course, water is a liquid, so I don't care about that. Uh, in the next uh, two lines here, I'm going to put 0 and 0. My initial concentration of products are 0. In my change row, I see that I'm not given anything else except the Kb value, so these are going to be minus x and plus x, just like we did for the acids. Now the equilibrium row is going to be 0 0.40 minus x, x, and x. And so now I'm ready to plug these values into the, uh, the Kb expression. I haven't written that yet, but it just looks like this. Kb equals the ammonium ion concentration times hydroxide all over ammonia. Just, just written like pretty much every other um, equilibrium constant expression. Now we can plug this in here, and we notice that this Kb value is very small, and so I can ignore the minus x using the 5% rule, just like we learned to do back in Unit 7. So that goes out, and when I cross multiply, I get x squared equals 7.2 times 10 to the negative sixth. So now, to solve for x, I just need to square root both sides. And I have x equals 2.68 times 10 to the negative third. And I can notice by looking at the icebox that the x value is equal to the hydroxide concentration. So that's what I was solving for in part b. Now for part c, well, the c is essentially going to be x, or the, the percent dissociation rather, is going to be the x divided by whatever it was subtracted from. So that's going to be the 2.68 times 10 to the, to the negative third divided by 0 0.40, of course, times 100 to convert that to a percent. So when I divide it, I get 0.67%. That's a good thing because if it had been over 5%, we would have had to go back all the way through there and use the quadratic equation, which uh, we uh, probably don't want to do. So 0.67%, that's good. It's got to be less than 5%. So now, let's solve for the pOH, and if we know the hydroxide concentration, pOH is pretty easy. It's just pOH equals negative log of the hydroxide concentration. So just take negative log of 2.68 times 10 to the negative third in your calculator, 
and you'll find that the pOH is 2.57. So that's part D. Now part E is the pH, and this is the little twist because normally when we solve for x, it gets us to pH, but this is a base problem, so it is, it is uh, going to give us the pOH. So to find the pH, we have to subtract from 14 using that equation right there. So when you subtract from 14, you find that your pH is 11.43. Hopefully that makes sense because in a weak base, you would expect your pH to be rather significantly above 7. Uh, probably not like 14 or something like that, but significantly above 7. Let's try another problem. In this one, a student places a pH meter into a 0.35 molar solution of hydrazine into H4 and finds that its pH is 10.89. Calculate the hydroxide concentration of the solution and the Kb of this weak acid. So we're going to start, first of all, by uh, realizing that if we have the pH, we really need to have the pOH in order to find the hydroxide. So let's just subtract this from 14 and get this into pOH. So it's 3.11. So now if we know the pOH, hydroxide is just 10 to the negative pOH power. So that's just a simple calculation on your scientific calculator. 10 to the negative 3.11 power. And so your hydroxide concentration is equal to 7.76 times 10 to the negative fourth moles per liter. So that's the answer to part A. Now for part B, we need to find the Kb. Well, in order to calculate Kb, we have to have a Kb expression. And in, in order to have a Kb expression, we have to have an equation, which we haven't written yet. So let's do that. The hydrazine is N2H4. And of course, it's added to water. The products are going to be the conjugate acid, which is N2H5+, plus, and hydroxide. So always get your products will be the conjugate acid and hydroxide. So if that's the case, our Kb expression is just N2H5+, plus times OH-, minus all over N2H4, equals Kb. And so now we can plug some numbers into that equation to solve for Kb. Now we have our hydroxide concentration because we just solved for that, so we can plug that in. And we have to remember that the N2H5 plus concentration is the same because it's a one to one mole ratio in the equation. And in the denominator, the N2H4 concentration is 0.35. Now it's actually 0.35 minus the hydroxide concentration, but this really doesn't affect our, our math much, so I'm just going to leave it as it is. And our Kb value is 1.7 times 10 to the negative sixth. So that's how we can solve for a Kb. So as you can see, we're adding a Kb into our alphabet of equilibrium constants. We had Kc, Kp, Ksp, Kw, Ka, and now we have Kb. So we have a, a veritable smorgasbord of equilibrium constants here that we've learned in this in the last couple units here. Now, let's take a look at the relationship between Ka and Kb. As it turns out, Ka times Kb equals Kw at any specific temperature. Now, since most of our problems that we're going to solve in this course are at 25 degrees Celsius. We know that Kw equals 1 times 10 to the minus 14th at that temperature. So if you know Ka, you can solve for Kb just by dividing into 1 times 10 to the minus 14th. Ka is, of course, the Ka for a weak acid, and Kb is going to be the Kb for its conjugate base. So if you know the Ka, you can figure out the Kb, and vice versa. If you know the Kb, you can solve for the Ka. So we're going to do a few problems, at least one problem with this, but let's just do a couple of, of uh, comparisons here. Let's, let's take a look at some weak acids and their Ka values. Let's calculate the Kb for these weak bases. So here's propionic acid, and it's Ka. So can we figure out the Kb of its conjugate base? And yes, we can. We just have to 
realize that it's 1 times 10 to the minus 14th divided by that Ka value. So when you key that into your calculator, you find that the Kb will be about 7.7 .7 times 10 to the minus 10th. How about for hydrocyanic acid? Its Ka is 4.9 times 10 to the minus 10th. Can we find the Kb of the cyanide ion? Well, we sure can. All we have to do is realize that we just have to take 1 times 10 to the minus 14th divided by 4.9 times 10 to the negative 10th. And when you punch that into your calculator, your Kb value is 2.0 times 10 to the minus 5th. Now one thing that you'll notice about the Kb values is they have very different magnitudes, don't they? This is a very small number, and then this one here is a very, well, it's a not a small number. This is a much larger number than the one up here. So when you have a larger value for Kb, that's a relatively stronger base. And the smaller value for Kb indicates a weaker base. So we can see here that, the, uh, that this ion is a much weaker base than the cyanide ion is. And that's interesting because if you compare the acids from which the bases were derived from, you might notice it's the reverse, isn't it? That the propionic acid is the stronger acid because it has the larger Ka value. So we kind of see a little relationship here. The stronger the acid, the weaker its conjugate base is going to be. And likewise, the weaker an acid is, the stronger its conjugate base is going to be. We're going to be doing some comparisons of this in a future video, but I just wanted to introduce you to this in this, in this section right here. Let's solve one more problem. This one here says calculate the pH of a 1.00 molar solution of sodium fluoride. And it tells us that the Ka for HF at 25 degrees Celsius is 6.8 times 10 to the negative fourth power. So maybe you're wondering, you know, it tells us HF, and what's this fluoride, and we got a sodium in there, what's, what's going on? Well, there are a couple of things we have to realize. The first thing we have to realize is that sodium ions, in fact, pretty much all um, alkali metal ions, are spectator ions, and we can ignore them. So what we really have here is a 1.00 molar solution of fluoride ions. That's what we have here. And our next step, once we realize that, is to calculate the Kb for this fluoride ion. So we know the, what the Ka is, so to find the Kb, we just take 1 times 10 to the minus 14th and divide by the Ka that we had. So that means that the Kb will be 1.5 times 10 to the negative 11th. So there we have our next step. So now, once we have that, let's write the dissociation of the weak base, F negative, and work the problem, just like we always have. So now, we can do that. So let's write the equation, fluoride, and of course it's added to water. The products are going to be the conjugate acid of this base, along with hydroxide. So we have HF and hydroxide. So now we're ready to set up our ice box. So we have this. Our initial concentration of fluoride will be 1 molar. The products are going to be essentially 0. And so now in our change row, we notice that we're not given anything else, any more information other than the dissociation constants here. So it's minus x and then plus x on the product side. So our equilibrium values will be 1 minus x and then x and x. So now we are ready to plug these numbers into the equilibrium constant expression. So for this, it's going to be Kb equals HF times hydroxide all over the fluoride concentrations. So when I plug these in, I got my Kb that I calculated a minute ago. So 1.5 times 10 to the negative 11th equals x squared all over 1 minus x. This is a very small equilibrium constant, so I feel pretty confident in taking out, taking out that minus x there. And when I cross multiply it, my math is pretty easy here, I have x squared equals 1.5 times 10 to the negative 11th. So to solve for x, 
I just have to take the square root. So I find that x equals 3.9 times 10 to the negative sixth. And so that is my hydroxide ion concentration. So if I know that, I can solve for the pOH pretty easily just by taking the negative log of that. And so just the negative log of 3.9 times 10 to the negative sixth is about 5.41. And so once I know pOH, I just have to subtract that from 14 to solve for the pH. So that will be 8.59. So that's the pH of this weak base. And as we can see, it's not that basic. So the pH is, is, it is over 7, but not significantly. Not uh, like a 14 or a, a 13 or something like that. 8.59 is moderately basic. I hope you've learned something about weak bases and acids and bases in this series of three videos about Unit 8, uh, Section 3. If you haven't subscribed yet, go ahead and consider subscribing. If you uh, like what you saw in this video, please hit that like button. Hope to see you in the next video where we're going to move on to Unit 8, Section 4. Thanks for watching.